episode 57 of Game Programming. That's what's up. My name is Eterno, and today we're going to talk about, well, we're going to talk about game programming. That's what we're going to talk about today. Big surprise, eh? Um, so, last episode I left you guys on a cliffhanger, and um, I don't know, just, just to mix it up a bit, you know, because it's, it's fun to do that. It's fun to make you guys suffer. No, it's it's more or less, I'm being serious here, by the way. It's more or less, it's fun to, to actually solve things yourself, which is why I like kind of, I might do that more often. Not like in the crude, cruel sort of fashion that I did last time where, well, the, the game didn't even function properly. But I, w I, I, I do like the idea of letting you guys solve things yourselves because that, that just involves the community a lot more and it is entertaining. So, um, MXXZ, not sure what kind of username that is, but literally MXXZ in the comments section of episode 56 actually pretty much solved the cliffhanger. Um, so... Shout out to him, or her, actually, MXX said it. it's not really a male or female name, but um, for solving that, uh, that problem. Now, we're going to implement it a bit differently than what he or she wrote. We're actually going to, um, well, first of all, we're going to talk about it, because you guys probably have no idea what I'm talking about. So, basically, we had this problem where we opened up the game, and we just went on the map. And why we went on the map? Why? Okay, well, let's talk about that now. So, well, what you might notice, right? Is that we uh we actually return if we if we go over here right in fact if we just don't go over here what's gonna happen right is if this if this statement isn't true right so if this statement is not true right the compiler well the game's going to go onto the next line of code which happens to be this one and run it because it's not returning this return obviously means that it actually exits the method in this case it returns this data. And then it does not run. This that code is not ran or run. That code is not actually executed if this statement is true, right? Because it returns. So in other words, what we should put here is let's just say good, right? So in other words, if good is actually printed, that means that at some point in this thing, this like this code and lower has actually, you know, been executed. So in other words, if good is printed out here in our console, that means that for one of the tiles, it has not returned a void tile. So in other words, let's, let's take a look here. And you can see here in the console that that's just not the case. Good is never printed. So what does that mean? That means that this statement is always true. So in other words, that tells us as programmers to actually take a look at this statement and try and make sure and just check it for errors. So you can't really go wrong with X and Y because that's the only way to input it. And we actually did do that earlier. And that worked fine, right? Um, less than zero. Zero is a static number, right? It's not like a variable. Uh, it's just a static number. is a constant. So there's nothing really to check there. However, we've got width and height. And they are our variables. So there's most likely something wrong with them. So if we come over here, we see, oh, okay, here we go. Check, check this out. This is our old constructor that we used when we actually made, ge made randomly generated levels. So apparently, we actually entered a width and height, and we set this dot width equal to that width. So in other words, if we wanted a randomly generated level that was 64 by 64 tiles big, then we put 64 here and 64 here, and that, that worked beautifully. But now, we've got a 16 by 16 size image that we actually load, right? So, is that actually, like, being applied here at all? And it looks like this is our other constructor. Not really, right? Width and height does, do not actually equal that. So let's go into our spawn level, since that's the level where we, lo where we load this thing. And over here, you'll see that, yeah, we do actually define the width and height. And remember, the width and height of our image is equal to the width and height of our map in tiles. So in other words, pixel, one pixel is a one-to-one -one scale here, where one pixel in the image equals one tile in the game. So all we need to do here is say that a part that in W, because remember we use that here, is equal to width, right? And image dot get width. So what this is going to do is it's basically going to make a new variable called W, which is and it, and W is going to be equal width, which is going to be equal image dot get width. So in other words, this line of code, in case you guys are having trouble understanding, is literally the same as this line of code. Right. 
these lines of code, this line, these lines of code are exactly the same as this one line of code. All right, cool. And now if we run our game here, you can see that we actually spawn in the top left corner because the top left corner is zero zero. And you can see how we've got this map now and it's just one map. Awesome. So that is basically how the map gets loaded. Um, I know you guys are going to hate me unless I give you guys some more content in this episode. So we're going to take a look at one more thing and that is actually customizing the player spawn location. I saw that came up on a Reddit thread on my subreddit. So I thought I might answer that. I don't know, someone probably answered it there. But um, because obviously not all you guys catch that, I'll, um, I'll talk about it here. So you'll notice that right now we actually spawn in the top left corner. Now why is that? And the reason that actually happens, and bear with me for a minute because I've got to open up my image to show you guys um, why that actually happens. So, here we go. Um, if, we open our, if we open our level file in paint.net, you'll actually see that if you, if you mouse over that area, which is right over here, you'll actually see that over here, right, it says 0, 0 when I mouse over there. Yep, you can see there, 0, 0. That is the coordinate of that level. That's why we spawn there because our player's position is equal to zero zero, and that co and that part of the map is zero zero as far as the as far as the map is concerned. So that's that's why we spawn there. Now in the player class, by the way, I saw a comment about this. I I press Control Shift T to actually open type, which means I can just pretty much search for classes and open them. All right. So Control Shift T is the shortcut for that. You can see here that we've got in X and in Y, right? So what we can do here is actually in game. So we made this constructor a while back, but what it does is it actually changes the location of our entity of our player entity to be, you know, whatever we specify here in the parameters. So if I actually go back to our game class where we instantiate this player, um, I can just add, I don't know, like 30 comma 30, right? And run this and let's see what happens oh look at that we're not on the top left corner anymore we're over here which is awesome so in other words i can totally customize how all of that works so i can maybe set this to like 200 this one to maybe like i don't know um 250 220 something like that and if i run it you'll see that i'll actually spawn there now that's all cool but what if i want to spawn in the middle like what if i want to spawn in the middle of a particular tile so in other words here you see that we're Actually, if I just clear these and set them to zero, 0, you can see that we sort of spawn there. What if I want to spawn on a particular tile? Well, all you, all you want to do there is, you know the tiles are 16 size big. So if you want to spawn, let's just say, let's just open up our level again. If I want to spawn right on this rock here, this is actually going to be really hard to do because um, it doesn't have coordinates. So let me just open it and paint on now again. All right, cool. So if I want to spawn on this like little rock here, we can see that that rock has coordinates 6, 4. So, and um, because we know, so 6, 4, right? Yep, so 6, X and 4, Y. And because we know that the tiles are 16, like 16 pixels large, we can simply go 6 times 16 for X and 4 times 16 for Y. This is very basic maths, but um, some of you guys might not be aware. And if we launch this, you can see that we spawned right on that rock. So that is sort of how you adjust the player spawn locations. Again, that'll be very, very, like, important and crucial to our game in the future but um that's also basically how we're going to be loading maps and tiles from now on so what i need now is i actually asked you guys a while back to send me tiles to send me sprite sheets and a lot of you guys did um which is awesome uh but if if there's anyone out there who thinks they can make a tile sheet that will contain all sorts of tiles for a Realm of the Mount of God type game one thing i didn't actually check that i i did get some really high quality ones but Guys, if you send me ones that you make or you find, make sure that they are actually like copyright free. So in other words, make sure that I have permission to use them. All right, that's very important because I don't want to get like I don't want to get in trouble. So yeah, but otherwise we'll start on actually making our spawn level probably next time, and then we'll talk about things like collisions and that sort of thing, and maybe some lighting as well. But um, hope you enjoyed this episode of game programming. If you did, hit that like button. Let's get to 200 likes, guys. I'm serious. Punch that like button. Let's get 200 likes. If you guys are enjoying that series, I appreciate it a lot. If you guys hit the like button, and I'll see you guys next time. Later, guys. Mm -hmm.